Okay, so we'll do a question on how to break down forces into their horizontal and their vertical components. So say we had a box um, on the ground and it's being pulled at an angle by a rope and the tension or the force in that rope is say, let's just make it nice and easy, 30 newtons. And the rope is being pulled at an angle of 20 degrees. And we want to find out what the vertical force is and what the horizontal force is. Because what's happening here is that some of this force, because the rope at an angle is at an angle, is going to pull the box upwards. And some will pull it to the right. So what we can do is we can split this force down into what we call the components, which is just the amounts that are making it go horizontal and vertical. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bit here and I'm going to move it to the side so I can work with it. So what we'll do is we'll grab this section. Hopefully it'll come with me. Oh, no, nope. the box doesn't want to come. So we'll just do that. Let me just delete them. That's easy. So I just made the diagram a bit simpler. So now what I want to do is I want to find the vertical and the horizontal components. So if we get, um, that's fine, if we get the arrow tool. And I'm just going to put on two arrows to represent horizontal and vertical, let's do, let's do black. Okay, one and two. Okay, so if I want to find the component of this force that is acting horizontal, all I need to do is I take the force and because the horizontal component is next to the angle, Whichever component is next to the angle, we have to do cosine of the angle. So to find this one, because it's next to the angle, it's just 30 cosine 20. So in this case, the horizontal component is 30 cosine 20. And to find the vertical component, because there is no angle there, it's net, the angle is over here, it's 30 sine 20. And that's all there is to it. So all you have to do is, if you want to find the component that's next to the angle, you just use cos. And if you want to find the component that's away from the angle, you use sine. Now, different situations can occur um, when you have something like this. So let's do another one. Let's say we've got um, an angle like that. And this say I know the, oh, I want red. Let's say I know the um, angle between the vertical. That's called valuable, hold on. Okay. So let's say I know this angle here, and this angle is 20 degrees. And I want this force is, 30 newtons again. So this time I want to find the vertical component and the horizontal component again. But the issue here is that the angle is this side this time. So because this side, the vertical component, is next to the angle, it's this one that will be cosine and it was this one that will be sine. So it will be uh, sorry, 30 cos 20. And this one here would be 30 sine 20. And then when you plug those into the calculator, they will find the horizontal and vertical components. So just be careful of these two cases. They're a bit different. When you want to find the component next to the angle, or what we call adjacent to the angle, use cosine. And the reason is, is if I go back to this example, it would be like doing normal trigonometry. Because as you can see, this side here, we know that's the hypotenuse. This side here is what we call the adjacent. So if I know the angle, then cosine is just adjacent over hypotenuse. So I want to find my adjacent, which is this side. So adjacent is hypotenuse times cosine of the angle. So it's h cosine of angle and the hypotenuse is 30 and then cosine of 20 so that's where it comes from 
Um, and the quick way is just to remember next to the angle is cos and away from the angle is sine.